Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mottar Hani, Assistant Editor at NTUS Pakistan, and I'm so excited to welcome you all to this live session, Soft Tissue Management Around Implants. And I'm so thrilled to welcome our speaker, Dr. Munis Mukhtar. Video and hello. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum, Mottar. Hello. Kesi hai? We are all good. Alhamdulillah. So we we are live now. Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, Ramzan Mubarak to everyone. Um, in Pakistan, uh, outside Pakistan, wherever we have been seen. Uh, I would like to thank Dental News Medical News team for arranging these very informative webinar because I have uh, going through all these previous webinars as well. just needs and upgrade ourselves with all sort of education, maybe dental, non-dental, it's up to you. Uh, so let's start with the presentation. Uh, I think Mother has already uh, given the introduction. I don't need to. A little bit about me, I'm, a, I'm basically a general dental practitioner with a specialty with my name in dental implants. My special interests are in soft tissue management, periodontal plastic surgeries, uh, other thing, managing complication in sinus lifts and all these. Here we actually conduct implant-based courses. Uh, we have international and local faculty on board. So this is little about me and my academy. Okay. I'm not seeing my lecture here. Wait. Just a minute. Why am I not being able to see my screen? Okay, this is a uh, little about me. Uh, I think Mother has already told you about this. Uh, I personally believe that uh, I have already introduced myself. Uh, I'm a proud Bratai graduate, mainly focused in private practice, as I said before, with some educational activity through this uh, academy. It's Academy of Oral Facial Aesthetics. Uh, rest is already mentioned on our page, basically where I've been going live, it's the issue. I believe soft issue is the issue where bone sets the tone. You can manage it either by working out, as I do, or working things out, like doing surgeries and manipulations. Uh, the topic which I decided is actually because I feel this is most important topic in implant dentistry. And I've been working on and around soft tissue for a very long time. Um, Mata, can you see the screen? Okay. This sure, is a, yeah, okay. This is a small disclaimer, which I believe I should have mentioned in the first phase. All the clinical cases picture, which I'll be showing during the presentation are of the patient on whom I either operated at my clinic or the clinic I go to. None of these pictures are being Photoshopped to enhance any effect. They are only being adjusted to fit in the side. I have taken help from different literatures and book for the scientific evidence, which I have been working on and I'll be quoting or discussing during this presentation. So nothing is on my own personal basis. It's mostly a scientific based presentation. I'll be quoting uh, literature references and I'll be showing my cases. Food for thought. This is an OPG. This is, uh, this is one of my old cases. I think uh, it's almost 12 to 15 years old. I did this case 15 years ago. By just seeing this OPG, uh, it's like if you don't go, it seems like you have bone levels which are nicely maintained if, if you talk about 15 years. Uh, she's actually a lady of around 75 years of her age. Uh, these implants, when I did, she was in her 
early 60s. So uh, this is what we see normally in our local presentation. We just look at the OPG and we decide, okay, this is the success of any case or success of any dentist or success of any implant. But the actual figure is a little different. So this is basically, I'm one of those people who actually show my own mistakes so that not other people can go through it. I want to learn and I have left tissue uh, issue, which we can see in this uh, area. She, obviously 15 years ago, I, I didn't know about these biotypes. I didn't know about these uh, importance of these soft tissues. So now I can see that she was a patient of thin biotype. Um, I can very well see that. But on the other side, if we see, she has lost almost all the keratinized tissue. She has no keratinized tissue. But we cannot see this thing in the OPG or any 2D picture. So this was actually the food of thought when I started thinking on soft tissue. And these were my basic. Uh, and then I started uh, going through literature. I started diagnosis of implant. These are a few questions which normally arrive when we talk about soft tissue. Is it the same amount of tissue that is needed for the tooth? Or is it sufficient for the implant too? Or do we need more or less? What is the function of soft tissue around implant? By the way, why do we need soft tissue? It's like, these are a few things which I believe uh, that's important before going for any case or diagnosis. A uh, little bit about scientific evidence. <clears throat> what does literature tell us about these soft tissue? Uh, this is the third European workshop, perion implant. This was consensus. Function of peri implant seal is to maintain homeostasis of the internal environment in response to challenges from external environment. So we need soft tissue to safeguard our implant inside the bone. And obviously when we have more soft tissue, we have more blood supply and then there are more protection. A little more, soft tissue, what do we need? Uh, is it just quantity that's important or it's quality as well? How much keratinized tissue is important? They say with less than two millimeters of keratinized tissue, more plaque, more inflammation. And that has been already been uh, stated and documented. So there is no ambiguity in that. Requirement of soft tissue around implants. Implant requires actually more soft tissue than we think. Uh, this tissue are less resistant to inflammation because uh, if we have thicker soft tissue, so ideally we should have vertical soft tissue, horizontal soft tissue, and the band of attached tissue all around our implants. So it is predictable to augment thick thickness rather than covering the recession that I considered as complication management. A two millimeter band of attached gingiva is necessary on both buccal and lingual side. If we need vertical, horizontal, and attached keratinized tissue, then the defect could be of different types. So what, this is a small defect classification, I would say. We could have quantitative defects. We could have qualitative defects. And we have combined defects as well. So in quantitative defects, we have thin gingiva, like thin gingival margins, uh, gingival recession. Qualitative defect, insufficient attached uh, During my case selection, what I have done, I'll, I'll take you through basic cases from minor procedures. And we'll take it towards advanced procedures, which are doable and which are predictable in achieving these soft tissue, uh, removing these defects. It could be apically deposition flap, uh, vestibular plasty, free gingival graft, rotational palatal pedicle, uh, roll on flap, CTG technique. It's called a connective tissue graft technique. It could be Vista, vestibular incision, sub periosteal tunneling, excess. IST intracellular tunneling, coronary advanced flap. And there's one more technique which I went through in a literature. And it could be the I1 technique. We'll be discussing in detail regarding I1 technique as well. Timing of soft tissue procedure and correct way of doing it. Uh, the best and the utmost uh, approach is microsurgical approach. Because if we don't go through microsurgical approach, you won't get the desired result because there is a lot of scarring. You actually lost a lot of tissue while manipulating it if you don't handle it delicately. Peri-implant soft tissue augmentation. So pre-implant soft tissue augmentation, we can 
manage or we can do this soft tissue augmentation before placing implant uh, like i do in most of the time soft tissue augmentation at the time of implant placement we can even do that while we are placing implant just to avoid extra surgical procedures during second stage yeah we can do it while uh, placing healing abutments post restoration um, normally i call it uh, complication management because uh, once this done but it's doable and it has predictable results as well what is microsurgery one of the most important key to achieve optimal wound healing is to use microsurgical approach the three basic element of microsurgical approach are optical magnification and illumination microsurgical instruments microsurgical suture materials the central goal of treatment based on these element is to achieve sorry is to achieve primary primary wound healing by handling the tissue atraumatically and with maximum precision this is very important uh, slide and i have added these phase from 0 to 3 days that's most important during this phase graft survive with a vascular plasma plasmatic circulation from the recipient bed close contact is essential for the survival of the graft graft is dependent on the nature of its recipient bed for diffusion of plasma and revascularization if you don't have enough vascular bed or enough vessels on your recipient bed then your graft will fail free graft in the treatment of gingival recession involves a great risk of failure revascularization phase they start from day 2 to day 11 after 4 to 5 days of healing anastomoses are established between the blood vessels of recipient bed and those in gingival grafted tissue capillary proliferation resulting in dense network of blood vessels in the graft fibrous union is established between the graft and the underlying connective tissue bed tissue maturation phase during this period a uh, number of blood vessels in the transplant gradually reduce approximately after 14 days the vascular system of the graft appears normal and this is the time when we mostly remove the stitches it's like neither before uh no later loops of magnification uh, as i said uh, for micro surgery you ideally needs magnifying glasses or magnifying loops the minimum magnification for periodontal plastic surgery or micro surgery is 3.5 to 4.5x magnification with the illumination these are micro surgical instruments and the grip normally which i use in my surgery this is yasid gil scissor or some micro surgical scissor this is castro um, this is uh, what do you call uh, these uh, suture forcer this is a micro a micro surgical tweezer uh, this is boozer elevator and uh, yeah this is micro blade tunneling instrument unc pro 15 mm the micro surgery obviously you can add or subtract according to your need this is the grip that's actually been utilized by using these instruments this is a pen grip of uh, microsurgical sutures there is there is a chart about all sorts of sutures that should be done from 709 or 605 60 suture which is available uh, proline in most of these uh, plastic surgery or microsurgical procedures different biotype this is one of my favorite slide i i i normally try to go for i tried to find chance to discuss this slide uh regarding different biotypes we have thin high scalloped uh then we have thick high scalloped thin low scalloped and thick low scalloped since uh, we don't have audience uh, questioning right now so i can just tell you have more uh, predictable prognosis in these cases more predictable outcome and uh, good results but these are the ones who actually have very less prediction unless you are very good in doing everything and even have good results depending upon the treatment plan you have gone through 
the cases most of these which i'll be discussing today in my uh, obviously in, in my uh, lecture um uh, i think i have just one case of this i think i have one case of thick low scallop as well okay let's go through it okay this is a peri implant aesthetic parameters you should ideally go for these things before going for your uh, treatment planning or during your treatment planning this is a risk assessment you have five diagnostic keys tooth position if your tooth is more apical or facial then it's a high risk case if it's more coronal or lingual then it's a low risk gingival form high scallop very high risk low scallop good prognosis biotype thin as we said earlier uh, it's uh, it's it's difficult to handle thick is good to handle tooth shape triangle mostly triangular teeth are available in thin biotype and high scallop patients so this is a part and parcel square teeth are normally thick and low uh, scallop uh, patient normally they have square teeth osseous crest position low crest high risk high crest low risk so we have less predictability if we have these high risk criteria or if we have these things available in our patient so you should be well informed about the predictability of your procedure and <clears throat> more predictable if you have low risk like if you have these things so this was the criteria uh, defined by kios et al okay this is this is the amount of soft tissue we ideally should have all around our implants uh vestibular vertical soft tissue sorry oh sorry this is once again another uh, chart of predictability uh soft tissue thickness if it's less than or equal to 2 mm then it's a thin by just inserting the probe if you can uh, see through it if it's shown through that means it's a thin biotype patient and if it's uh, deep and you cannot see um, the image of the probe then it's a thick biotype so soft tissue thickness if it's a thin biotype that means it's equal to or less than 2 mm thick means it's more than 2 mm facial height of peri implant mucosa is less than 3 mm in thin biotype it's more than 4 mm in thick biotype immediate pla implant placement in non ideal position if you place an implant in a non ideal position there are chances of more recession more papilla loss but if it's a thick biotype there is a chance of less recession less papilla loss platform switching to minimize bone loss we normally talk about platform switching a lot but if you are working in a thin biotype patient you won't get much advantages of this platform switching in fact you get, you, you don't get any benefit because there are studies of linkwees where he actually uh, concluded that in thin biotype patient you even with the platform switching you have bone losses uh, in a thick biotype you have potential benefit yes restorative component it's always preferred to go for zirconia because it has a good adaptability of soft tissue but uh, in thick biotype zirconia preferred but titanium is possible you can actually manage the results there was a, a study by linkwees uh, although the, he actually plays uh, made two groups uh, one with has a 4 mm of soft tissue around the implant and the other one has the thickness of 2 mm uh after 2 months of healing while the test group with a vertical dimension of tissue measuring 2 mm or less encountered significant bone resorption control group at the placement test group at the placement so you can see this was the control group at the placement uh this is the test group at the placement then they remove the 2 mm of keratinized tissue from the control group even after then there was no bone loss so that means if you have a thick tissue a uh, thick vertical tissue or thick keratinized tissue you know um, once again that was uh, but that was a patient study the influence of mucosal tissue thickness on crystal bone stability around bone level or prostatic control clinical trial where he actually 
mention and concluded uh, the implants being placed in a soft tissue thickness of 2 or less than 2 mm they had bone losses even uh, even before second stage procedures and the uh, implants where they actually uh, thickened the soft tissue by adding either uh, collagen membranes or by doing anything or the cases or the patient who already have thick biotype or they have tissue more than 3 mm they have least amount of bone loss and that was around 0.0 something 0.04 or something that's a negligible volume so the question is how thick horizontal thickness uh, is the horizontal thickness also important yes it is they say if you have a good horizontal thickness you have less gingival recession you have better pink aesthetic obviously if you are working in a steric zone so that's the most important thing after vertical thickness so now we are talking about two different things one is vertical thickness and the other one is uh, horizontal thickness so these both are very important uh one of the cases uh this is this is a basic case but uh, if you have a critical eye you can see there is no keratinized tissue so you have proper vestibular depth so vestibule is not an issue we can actually look at there uh, let me show you okay so 0.5 or 2 mm so ideally in the for the long term prognosis we have to do any minor procedure uh, i i'm not saying that if you don't do anything it, it's going to fail no it's not but ideally for the long term prognosis you need to graft something here so our implants so this is an osteotomy uh, we went for full thickness plaque uh, took a ct from the palate first place the implant these are polished collar implants ct graft from the palate and just suture it on the buccal flap didn't do anything much just a small surgery with the implant surgery so you can see the thickness which wasn't there before so now you can very well appreciate you have achieved just by doing a small procedure this is a band of keratinized tissue which we achieved which was which wasn't there before we saw it in the previous slides now you have good keratinized tissue uh, which is mandatory for your future prosthesis you can see the band of keratinized tissue here as well uh post op x ray after 8 weeks and then uh, this is the immediate immediate insertion picture you can see the blenching this is post of 4 years so now we can very well appreciate the band of keratinized tissue and which is just just safeguarding everything which is inside it so that's that's what we are talking about this is post of uh 4 years another case uh this is just an immediate extra after extraction we do have uh, remodeling of buccal bone even if we graft uh, we can have a little bit remodeling in this area so in the second stage while opening this implant we just do this is a roll on procedure a roll on flap we, we I, i think we we talk about this procedure in our soft tissue management procedures you just uh, go palatally little sub periosteal uh, sub epithelial uh, just as i did this is ct uh, something like pedicle you can suture it up or you can just press it with your healing abutment so this is the difference after 2 weeks this is my procedure this is my post op opg and this is the picture after 2 years so we are we are keeping our soft tissue pretty well 
So the band of keratinized tissue is there. Uh, another case, uh, this is once again, this is a thick, low scallop. Uh, I would say it's a very easy case. But still, because of the loss of this lateral incisor, there is a dip. Obviously, there is a little deficiency of hard and soft tissue both. Quality is not an issue in this case. Uh, this is while doing surgery. Obviously, we had to graft this area. Uh, this is a band of uh, cortical bone, but there was a deficiency behind it. So we grafted that area with allograft and uh, membrane. We covered it up, sutured, close it. This is the second stage. Just to add up a little bulk on the, because this is an aesthetic zone, just to add a bulk, which is we are not doing any additional surgery, just while opening the implant, we just took CT from this area and just roll it there. You can very well post op OPG after second stage. This is from where we started. And this is where we ended. These are our screw retained crowns. So you can see we have actually achieved. Uh, as I said, this was so the results in these cases are mostly and always predictable. So we have good tissue. We manage what we lost actually by adding hard and soft tissue. This is frontal view. Another case. She is definitely, uh, she's one of my old cases, I think, for low scallop. She's a thin biotype, but she's not high scallop, she is low scallop. So here in this area, we have lost good amount of tissue. We just have keratinized tissue in this area. So if we play, obviously there is a deficiency of heart tissue in this area as well. But if we just treat heart tissue, then maybe the long-term prognosis of your bone is not gonna good. So what we did, now you can see it better. You have very thin amount of keratinized tissue. So she is thin, low scallop. We did rich split GBR with the titanium mesh, but while doing the second stage, We started from here, and this is what we achieved while our second stage. So this is a good band of keratinized tissue, which is actually, which will safeguard my implants from where we started. This is what we have achieved. We talked about the vertical thickness and the horizontal. So we have achieved both of them. This is the final procedures. We can, we can still appreciate our, the, keratinized, the band of keratinized tissue is still keeping our implant healthy and safe. This is post-op three years. Bone levels are stable. So you have this uh, bone cortical case. Uh, this is little advanced case. I would say uh, you have, uh, there is a, this, this is a combined effect. You have quality and quantitative issues. So you have lost of vestibular depth and keratinized tissue. So there is no nice tissue and this is all mobile. So you can see it there as well. This is all mobile tissue. And by seeing this case, this is once again, I would say thin, uh, low scallop, not high scallop. This is the free neural graft. We took it from the palate. Uh, uniform thickness of free general grafts favor early healing and optimal thickness minimize shrinkage. So if we have a thickness of more than two millimeter, then probably it will take more time to get healed. Uh, it has more shrinkage. So, uh, 
uh, more than two and you should not even ideally uh, come less than 1.5. So we took it from the pallet. We epically reposition the flap. We place it on the ridge. This is immediately after surgery with the periacryl, the cyanoacrylate glue. And this is after two weeks of healing. So wait. Oh, my bad. Okay. So now if you look at this picture, you have good amount of vestibular depth. You have thick tissue. Obviously, it's not fully healed and fully matured. But you can still see you have thickness there. You have... Uh, so this is after eight weeks. You have good vestibular depth. You have good keratinized tissue all around your ridge. And now we plan for implant and heart tissue grafting. So that was a thin tissue as well. So we plan for ridge split and GBR with titanium mesh. We place the implant simultaneously. This is what we achieved after the placement of implant after four weeks. So you have good amount of soft tissue. Your implants are placed. This is what we have achieved in the second stage. You have good amount of volume. You have good vestibular depth. And your implant is almost three millimeters down here. Once again, you can very well appreciate the buccal keratinized tissue, which we grafted, the vestibular depth. So she can maintain her oral hygiene on a very good pace. This is immediate post-op. This is after two years. And happy patient. This is one of the cases with high prenatal attachment and thin vertical soft tissue. So this is the frenal pull. Maybe there is, there is no or there is a very less amount of bone deficiency in this area. But if you place the implant without managing this thing, or without adding anything here, then in the long run, you might end up losing the buccal bone around your implant. So if you look at it, she's pretty thin from here. She has a thin biotype. You can see there is no keratinized tissue in this area. Uh, there is a term called composite graft. Um, basically, I call it composite graft because in, um, I normally take in one procedure uh, the uh, CT and free genital graft. I'll be, I'll be showing it in a video as well. So in this graft, what we have done, we have gone supra, uh, supra, uh, uh, supra epithelium. So this is with the epithelium. And this is sub epithelium. So this is inside. So the advantage of this procedure is uh, we have obviously by taking out this big graft, you have very big uh, defect in the palate or there is a big area. But by just doing this, you have only this amount of defect that is exposed. Rest is, rest is all covered with epithelium. So it has, uh, it takes least amount of time. Plus, in the same one procedure, I can achieve thickness and vestibular depth. So um, I just went through this uh, epically repositioned flap. My band of keratinized tissue of free genital part goes on the buccal side. My CT buccal height. So we'll be managing both of these things in one procedure. After that, we went for heart tissue or implant placement. This is after the implant placement after four or five weeks. So you have good band of keratinized tissue, a keratinized band all around this implant. We started from here and this is what we achieved. I think it's a pretty decent outcome. You have band of keratinized tissue all around your 0.5 uh, subcrestally. Uh, you have... Uh, uh, good emergence profile and you have stable bone. This is post of OPG. 
another okay this is one of my old cases uh eight years ago nine years ago we i think the people who are looking at these uh what does it takes either need to graft or something so these are all 11.5 or maybe 13 millimeters polish collar implants and this is post of eight years as i said by just looking at these opgs like this is neither very ideal but it's not that bad so patient came for a regular visit i saw these gray appearance once again my implants are inside the bony contour but this happen when you have a mobile tissue around your implants and you so you have least amount of keratinized tissue but now your bone uh, you're losing bone in this area and if you look at the other side you have high frenal pull there is a high muscle activity in these areas so if you don't address it now may I took tuberosity graft. Uh, this is one of the best graft inside our mouth, but unfortunately, we have the least amount of it present inside the mouth. And uh, if the patient has third molar, so you you normally don't even have it. Uh, these are like sushis, uh, very dense connective tissue. The good part is they have the least amount of shrinkage, and these are the good ones to hide or. camouflage anything because when you and on the other side i went for free general graft obviously the main disadvantage of free general graft is you don't get very high end aesthetics because they are like uh, they 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 do color from the palette uh, and most this is post op after surgery we did it in the same surgery both sides soft tissue after 8 weeks if you remember there is no gray tinge you can very well appreciate the thickness you have actually covered the high frenal thing and now you have keratinized tissue on on these implants this is 12 weeks after soft tissue surgery as i said will this is going to stay there for a longer period of time uh not very aesthetically pleasing but still uh, it's serving the purpose this is once again post op opg okay uh one of the difficult cases i would say um uh, and uh, i actually uh, saw very very unpredictable reason of the bone loss so this is a very uh, thin tissue all around she has a mobile tissue so when we place implant we didn't go for prior soft tissue surgery i did soft tissue surgery of her during my second stage but by the this is the video uh, tutorial of the composite graph which i was uh, showing you guys before so maybe you can get uh, some idea about um, how to take it and how to fix it that's what i do normally sorry okay this is uh, there is a loss of vestibular depth which we saw in that picture we have least amount of keratinized tissue this is actually a second stage surgery we don't want to lose even a single millimeter of our connective tissue uh, or a keratinized tissue which we have so we just go partial thickness in this area and full thickness not really full thickness the partial thickness on this area as well so we want to gain vestibular depth in this area and thickness on the other side how to take this graft so these are three incisions we measured the defect we already measured did and then now we are just going in epithelium in this area because we are not really going deeper from here onward we'll go deeper to get the ct from there and free general graft from this area
now here uh, we will not go deeper than two millimeters because we are just taking the epithelial part with the minimum amount of CT. And from here onward, we'll go deeper because we leave this portion and we took the internal connective tissue part. So here I'm just going for periosteal cut to take out my CT. I come deep here, but here I just come superficially. So this is superficial, this is deep. Hold this part with the fine dissection. CT, we took it. Just small uh, incisions to expose my implants. I didn't go subperiosteally. Took out another one. I place my graft on the implants. The CT part comes over the implant to gain vertical thickness, like this. And the free nipple uh, part goes on the vestibular side. So my graft is being stabilized with, uh, with my healing abutments. Additionally, I, 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 I place few sutures, obviously, to stabilize this. Close approximation and uh, close contact with the recipient bed is very important. So these are pressurized sutures. So this pretty good healing. Okay. Uh, as I said, I started losing bone in this area as a post-op eight weeks. So you have very, very good bulk of keratinized tissue all around your implants. Final prosthesis, you have vestibular depth. You have keratinized tissue to safeguard your implants. In the top one year, I lost some bone, but I'm keeping it now. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a close follow-up of my implants. Okay, uh, this is one of the specialized procedure. This is, uh, this is, and when I have to go for soft and hard tissue management simultaneously. So this analysis suggests that the inter interpositional vascular augmentation neogenesis, that's short form is IVAN, technique can be used effectively to simultaneously augment hard and soft tissue. This technique effective when used in conjunction with the immediate or delayed placement of dental implant in the maxillary anterior segment. So this is mostly for aesthetic zone. Furthermore, when using this technique, the specific membrane and FDVA source can be chosen by the practitioners to treat individual defects. Simultaneous hard and soft tissue augmentation for implant is the aesthetic zone. This is a consensus report of 37 cases uh, done in University of California, San Francisco School of Dentistry. This is, uh, this is um, the extraction side where we have to place implants. So you just go, uh, no vertical incisions, crystal incisions, two uh, teeth on each side. You actually raise the buckle and then you close it like this. You can place implant or you cannot play, uh, you don't want to place implant, that's up to you. But you grab this area. Uh, bone graft, then membrane, then you cover it with the CT. So because you have graft, you have implant, they are all avascular things. You don't have vessels there. So you have vessels from the buccal flap, a little bit, whatever you have, and from the palatal side. This is the case which I uh, treated with this technique. I had a patient, she had localized periodontitis, I would say, with you have lost 70% of your bone. These are grade three mobile. 
she is moderately i wouldn't say she is very high lip you can see the recessions and black triangles recession in this area recession in this area obviously these are my implants area she is once again uh, i would say thin high scallop not really if then maybe thick high scallop but definitely high scallop we don't have much buccal bone available around our teeth uh the flap as we saw in the picture two implant distal two implant mesial obviously this was a uh, we placed our implant try to be in the aesthetic contour at least 1.5 mm behind the soft tissue margin uh the most important thing if you don't get the stability of your implant then uh, it's not advisable to go for immediate implants in these type of cases we took ct pedicle it obviously we grafted this area as well buccal grafting was done and then we covered everything with our ct uh, trim them from the root side bond them with the composite bonded them with the composite this is immediate post op uh almost good amount of this is where uh, till this end we grafted obviously post op 6 weeks not really bad we have good healing uh she is a uh, central incisor this uh, recession coverage by doing a a uh, coronally advanced flap and a small ct before going for her permanent crowns this is her soft tissue status before when we started this is after 6 weeks so if we if we just go through it uh, obviously this is not been fully this is second stage surgery healing abutments this is post op after one year so not obviously uh, not very uh, uh, these these crowns are ideally not been matched but they are really close she was very happy soft tissue we have achieved what we planned this recession was covered 80% i would say if not 100% around our implants additionally this is from where we started we have lost of hard and soft tissue in these areas this is what we got we have good amount of good bulk of soft tissue keratinized tissue all around our implants and uh, anterior teeth this is post op 3 years papilla is obviously with a creeping attachment it's growing you have band of keratinized tissue if you talk about uh, opg you have bone maturation in this area as well so bone is almost keeping well okay conclusion uh, what's take home message this thing from the start at least 2 mm of attached tissue should be present on the buccal and lingual aspect of implant this is very important connective tissue graft is still considered as gold standard in various soft tissue grafting procedure around implants however different other techniques and materials have certain scientific backing too like uh, people suggest and claim that they use uh, alloderms they use uh, cgf membranes or prf membranes but they are really good i'm not i'm not against them but they are not gold standard and they work mostly when you already have a thick biotype in thin biotype most of the time uh, it doesn't pose a threat to peri implantitis this is a major threat to our implants peri implantitis and but if you have 4 mm tissue thickness uh, and that's a vertical thickness we are talking about then uh, your implant doesn't pose the threat towards peri implantitis soft tissue plays an integral role in the long term stability of crystal bone around the implants 
nevertheless it's not the only factor that plays the role in the long term prognosis of successful implant so what i meant i have just shown you one way of the picture but that's not the only thing that's important in the long term stability obviously three dimensional placement of your implant um uh, cement versus screw retained there are a lot many factors in the long term stability of your implant but this is just one aspect which i covered obviously if we need to cover more obviously we need more time uh i believe uh, i have yes uh, dr munis i actually had a couple of questions uh, that has been dropped by the listeners or the audience as as can i say uh there's this question uh, by aisha awan i know that we have already discussed this thing but if you really want to answer it she's asking is there is any way to evaluate angle of implant placement uh angle of implant placement ideally uh, because nowadays we are working on guided surgeries uh, 3d stents are the best way to place uh ideally place three dimensional implants uh the angulation uh if, correct me if i'm wrong or maybe you might you might uh if you mean the same what i'm explaining uh correctly the best thing would be you should ideally go for 3d stents they are available they have been made in pakistan now and obviously the more experienced people they can do it by their own immediate extraction sockets are the one from there and uh, it's always recommended that you should not ideally touch your buccal bone you should always uh, stay ahead from your buccal bone prefer to place your implant on palatal side or lingual side buccal mm-hmm. bone is the critical zone and now there are certain techniques like uh, socket shield but these are the ones who can actually guide them to place the best implant in position right uh, there's another question by dr sadia saif she is asking uh, please explain more about composite graft and its technique i think uh, we don't have much time for that i think the maximum <laughs> i could do the maximum i could do i show you the video uh, that's a maximum we can see uh, but yeah. as i said uh, we can gain uh, bulk quantity and quality at the same time by just doing this graft um i haven't to be honest i haven't gone through any literature by doing this is something which uh, now i can claim this is my own um, maybe somebody has worked it all uh, but i haven't searched literature a lot but mm-hmm. this is something which i thought that maybe in one procedure we can gain quality and quantity in one procedure so you mm-hmm. get band of keratinized tissue by taking free gene graft and connective tissue to gain the thickness all around your implant so it's actually a 3d graft you would say so you can achieve mm-hmm. everything in one procedure regarding right. soft uh, and i think uh, this should be the very last question tawseef anjum is asking assalam alaikum my gums are going down and losing and uh, what should i do uh, i think you should see your periodontist <laughs> that's the <laughs> best and foremost <laughs> you should definitely see at your earliest because uh, you are losing time you are losing time Okay and with that we have actually reached the very end of our session thank you dr munis for taking My time pleasure. out of your busy schedule and guiding us through your knowledge i hope the listeners have also enjoyed the session as well thank you sir Once my pleasure thank time. you very much thank you very much assalam alaikum uh,